Boo! I'm sure that scared you quite a bit, but prepare to be spooked even more. Prepare to be shook into your very core, to have the very fierce center of your brain, the amygdala, stimulated in every way possible, because it's the spooky season. And as an anime and manga aficionado who dabbles with some horror, I would like to make your October even better by suggesting my top 10 horror anime and manga. I'm typically not a big horror guy who gets scared of pretty much everything, but I inadvertently fell in love with horror anime and manga after trying to prove to myself that I could never get scared of it. It's still not that scary, but I enjoy it. So here's my list of the 10 most fun horror anime and manga. If you end up enjoying any of these or find them horrifying, drop a like, subscribe, all the regular YouTube stuff, but also let me know in the comments which ones you enjoyed and give me a couple recommendations too. I'm sure there are many great gems that I just haven't found yet. And I'm already going to start off with something unique that I'm sure most of you haven't heard of. Because it technically isn't an anime. It's a Korean cartoon that came out when I was still a young boy in Korea. The show is called Shinbya Patsu, and an apt translation in English would be Mysterious Apartment, but they just went with the most generic option of, you won't believe it, Haunted House. You can find the show on Netflix, and there is a Japanese and English dub along with, of course, the native language first and foremost, but what is it about? Hari and Duri, which I just realized as I'm writing this that their names are a wordplay on the numbers 1, Hana, and 2, Tul. I don't know, I just never noticed this before. This show is about the siblings Hari and Duri who live in an apartment that is often regarded as haunted. This is because there are many fuck things that happen to the people that live there, and yeah, there are a ton of ghosts that come out. Hari and Duri, along with a couple of friends, have the task of acting as guardian of the apartment with the help of this little green guy named Shinbi. His whole deal is that he's a tokebi, which is just a goblin slash demon thing in Korean folklore. It's very interchangeable with Oni from Japanese folklore. The gang has to find ways to defeat the ghost haunting various locations, not just restricted to the apartment, and sometimes they get their souls and are able to summon them with a watch on their wrist called the Ghost Ball. It's very yokai watch-esque, but with some actually scary ghosts. I don't know how I would react now, but back then, I got so scared of this show. Especially the episode with the marionette doll and the one in the second season with the have you seen this man guy coming up in their dreams, which by the way, don't watch the second season onwards because even as like an 8 year old, I was able to tell that they lost the plot. And by the way, I had a dream about that guy chasing me the same night I watched that episode, which really fucking freaked me out for a long, long time. I don't know if I could really call it an anime, though if you watch it in Japanese, it pretty much is, which is why I left it in the number 10 spot. But this show was my childhood, and I have many great memories with it, and I want to share it with everyone here. The second entry on this list is the Junji Ito Collection. There are two of them, one called Junji Ito Collection, and one called Junji Ito Collection Maniac. So, first of all, I know that this isn't the best representation of Junji Ito's masterful works. People heavily criticize the series for many reasons. The two primary reasons are the structure of the show itself and the art. The structure of the show is a somewhat weird one. It's an anthology, meaning that it is composed of many short stories compiled into one show, but the time each story gets is just weird. With two short stories within each standard length episode, one would expect it to have a somewhat even split of around 10 minutes per story with it fluctuating by a minute or so, but that isn't the case at all. Some of the stories have like 15 minutes on one story and 5 minutes for the other, 17 for one and 3 for the other. The most preposterous instance of this is in the first episode, with 20 minutes on the first story, which was lackluster in itself, giving less than a minute for the next one. And yeah, what a surprise, but you can't really get a good horror experience from 3 minutes or 40 seconds, can you? The next qualm people have with the show is the art style. It's not like it's one of the worst things I've ever seen or anything, but it's just kinda impossible to accurately recreate Junji Ito's art style. It's too unique and it only kinda works in manga form until recently, which I'll get into that later. So if there are so many problems with it, why is it even on the list? Well. To be honest, there is a lack of horror anime. It's simply not as popular. So even though this isn't like the best anime I've seen or anything, it gets a spot on the list. And also let me just say that with it being based on Junji Ito's original works, it already gives it a certain base level of guaranteed quality. 
The individual stories were hit or miss, but honestly, it was a hit more often than not. My two favorite stories within both series are probably Ice Cream Bus and Layers of Fear. Ice Cream Bus was short, odd, uncanny, and got straight to the point. Layers of Fear was a unique concept with a good amount of body horror and other general creepiness. A small spoiler for the scene at the end, so skip this part if you want to go watch it. But my favorite scene from Layers of Fear was the scene where the mom rips her face off. It was slightly scary, but weirdly enough, I laughed at that. I like that a lot about Ito's works. He doesn't take them that seriously and definitely has fun with them. He thinks of something that is borderline stupid, I wanna say, but in a good way, and absurd, and translates that onto a paper, still just as absurd but also somewhat scary. It's that level of self-awareness that really puts him above any other horror manga artist in my opinion, which is also why I will refrain from putting too many Junji Ito works because, quite frankly, he could easily fill up all 10 slots. So check this show out if you want, but definitely do check his original manga out. I'll speed run through some of my favorites. Uzumaki, Tomie, Frankenstein, which actually tells the original from Mary Shelley in a more reader-friendly manga form. No Longer Human, which is a post-war era classic, even taught at many schools in Japan by Osamu Dazai. The original isn't necessarily a horror, but Ito gives his own interpretation of it and makes it one. Some others are Gyo, Snow White, Ribs Woman, Layers of Fear, Human Chair, and many more. Just go browse his works and I can confidently guarantee that you will have a good time. Coming in at the number 8 spot is Miyaruko-chan. <clears throat> Miyaruko-chan is about a girl who can see ghosts, and with the ghosts that, quite frankly, aren't pleasant to look at, constantly pestering her, trying to get her attention, Miko is kinda miserable. Apparently, many ghosts in Asian cultures aren't able to hurt you unless you acknowledge their existence, so she tries her best not to do that. Let's get the obvious out of the way. The ghosts are freaky as hell with an almost Junji Ito-esque look to them, but that's about it. The show almost solely relies on the fact that the ghosts look cool and scary. Overall, the show isn't scary at all and you even start to get used to how the ghosts look very fast as they all somewhat resemble one another. The primary reason for this is because it's not meant to be scary. Literally, in the Crunchyroll synopsis, it says that it could be sometimes hilarious. This story is supposed to be a comedy about this girl's everyday life while going through something as miserable as this all while trying to solve a mystery. This could be really good, the comedy could be funny and freaky at the same time by utilizing the juxtaposition naturally set up by this premise, but the characters themselves aren't that interesting and therefore the jokes don't always land. For example, the main character's best friend's whole character is that she has big boobies, likes food, and is a Genki girl. And also speaking of boobs, this story is weirdly horny. Like, there have been a few too many panty shots and boob jokes with one of the ghosts even just groping the girls. So while this isn't a traditional horror, if you're looking for some quick slop to watch and decently enjoy with some of the most chilling ghost designs, maybe give it a quick watch. I think the best way to enjoy this one specifically is with a couple of well inebriated friends and laughing at it with them. Also, I just found out about this while I was editing, but Miyako-chan is supposed to get a live action movie in summer 2025, so there's that if you'd like the series enough. Coming right up is a classic for every teenager in the 2010s. Another is a horror mi <coughs> Another is a horror mystery light novel adapted to an anime. It's about a boy named Koichi who moves to the town his parents lived in when they were younger where some freaky shit starts to happen, specifically within their school more specifically within their classroom, and even more specifically regarding a particular girl named Mei Misaki. The mystery is great, there is a lot of murder, especially child murder, which I love. In fictional media of course, it has a lot of gore and that first shocking scene with the umbrella, if you know what I mean, genuinely had me going, ooh, ah, damn, that's crazy. It's an overall solid show, and though it is pretty highly regarded within the edgy anime community, I think that it's still kinda underrated. I think that's the case for all the shows mentioned here today. Seriously, horror anime and manga is criminally underrated and not enough of it gets made. Which is a shame because some of them not only do scare, but tell the most interesting, unique stories out there. Another is great. 
But the only reason it isn't any higher than this is because they kinda lose the plot towards the end. But even then, the ending isn't disgustingly bad or anything, just not up to the standard the rest of the show sets. Number 6 on the list is one that I found really recently. Pygmalion is a short 19 chapter manga with each chapter being around 20 pages long except for the first two which are slightly longer, and it isn't a traditional horror I would say. And also, if you look this up on some totally legal websites, there is a high chance you will get some smuts and BLs which if you like those kinds of things, go for it I guess, but the one we are talking about here is the one with the obviously spooky looking cover. Pygmalion is really good at gore and body horror. The base plot is that in the national local mascot festival, there's apparently a big mascot culture in Japan, the mascots go rogue and start massacring every human around them. Our main character, Keigo Ayahara, loses his little brother who runs off somewhere, and his main goal is to find his little brother and solve the mystery of why any of this is happening. In a short time, I started to really care about the characters, and there are many deaths which if you've seen my death video, you know I like. The imagery and body horror is genuinely freaky as hell, with the typically jovial mascots turning into abhorrent, macabre monsters evoking a certain fear in me that I don't know how to explain elegantly, I just know that it's fucking creepy. And the ending, woo, that was good. This isn't just a good horror, it's a good story that is efficiently told. It's such a cool concept and the only slight problem I have with it is that the final boss is kinda underwhelming. I kinda wish maybe he kills one or two of the seemingly important characters first, but even that is just minor. Everything else about this manga was great, but I do have to warn you about this one chapter where a big pig mascot oinks and boinks some girls and then chomps their heads off and slurps their faces off during a kiss and things of that sort. If you can stomach it, go read this. If you can't, I have 6 other things that you may like. After that is PTSD Radio. This has the scariest art within this list, I'm not lying. It was so bad that I was hesitant to scroll because scrolling to this is a jump scare on its own. And I don't personally like jump scares so I won't torment you with them any further after this one. Sorry, sorry, but that's also how this manga is, it just has scary art. Sure, it's unique as hell with even the structure of the story becoming an avant-garde, artistic statement almost. <laughs> you see, this story consists of many little vignettes that center around some ghosts, but it's told in little segments. So for example, one chapter will be about this time in the present, and the next will be about a completely different story, and then the next could be about before the first story. It's all out of order, and if you read it like a normal person would, it will be completely incoherent. I heard on reddit somewhere that the chapter names are radio frequencies, which they are, and that you are supposed to read it from the smallest number to the highest, but even if you do that, the story itself isn't that interesting and it barely makes a modicum of sense, and that's why it isn't ranked any higher. Sure, it's scary, but that's really it. The story itself is not that good and is really only like a big jump scare, but I want to talk a little more about that. I noticed that horror anime and manga often aren't that scary and I think that this is due to a different objective. The objectives of western horrors are to scare. It doesn't really matter how good the story is as long as it has good jump scares and a scary looking entity, it's a success. Horror anime and manga however, tend to veer towards telling a story. Even with many chances to do jump scares, I mean it's not that hard to do a jump scare, they don't utilize it they'd rather tell a story about a ghost or a monster and how people react to it. PTSD Radio is more like a western horror in that regard, so it might genuinely be good for the right demographic, but for those that are looking for a genuine story, there are better ones out there. But it made it this far up just because of how good it is at scaring you, so some of you may really like this. I personally think that the ideal horror anime would take the best from both worlds, utilizing tactics to purely scare you, but also tell a satisfying story that makes complete sense. Coming in at the number 4 spot is Paranoia Agent. Paranoia Agent is less of a horror with ghosts and stuff, and more of a thriller with a potentially supernatural killer. It 
does have some supernatural elements, don't get me wrong, but you won't really get any scary imagery. And even the actual thriller stuff isn't that scary. It's literally a kid with a bat and roller skates. There's a limit to how scary that can be. But the real horror in the show comes with all the messed up real life stuff that is shown. This show deals with a plethora of things, including mental illness, specifically dissociative identity disorder, aka multiple personality disorder, being bullied, and there's this one episode where a couple of dudes and a kid want to go end their lives, so they try multiple things to do that, and when all of that fails at the end of the episode, they just skip around and dance with jolly looks on their faces, and no real explanation is given leaving that whole thing in ambiguity. The rest of the show is just as trippy. Towards the end of the show, one of the characters gets transported to a different world, and I don't know if that really happened or if it is all in their heads or what. There are many mysteries within the show that you yourself have to figure out, leaving almost everything unsure and up to your personal interpretation. Like, what the hell is that grandpa's deal? What do his equations mean? Is the new guy the same grandpa? I don't know, and if you do end up watching this, maybe leave your interpretation in the comments, as quite frankly, I had no idea myself even after watching it. Uzumaki, Junji Ito's magnum opus, the piece that is often regarded as his Pierre de Resistance, comes in a little short of the number 2 spot and sits nicely in the one behind it. Uzumaki literally means spiral, which is why you might know that word from Naruto who has an Uzumaki on his stomach, and the story is just that. In a small town in the country called Kurozucho, weird freaky things start happening with spirals. People are changing, they're going insane, they're literally becoming spirals. I didn't really want to add too much Junji Ito stuff as I explained earlier, but this one is in a league of its own. Whether you read the manga or watch the anime, you are in for a good time. It's wacky concepts with a classic Junji Ito art style mixed perfectly together to make one of the best things I've seen, not just exclusive to horror. It's gotten so, so big, so big that it was part of the reason for me not putting it in the number one spot because I know so many people are already going to be doing that. I'm sure even those of you who aren't familiar with horror anime and manga are still very familiar with this picture and this one too. I can't emphasize enough just how good it is. I do have to admit though that it does lose the plot a tiny bit towards the end and it gets a bit wacky, but even that is a very stylistic wacky. Ito made this work. This guy is the undeniable goat of horror manga who can make almost anything work. And I'm so glad that the new anime is as good as it is because they could have made the same mistakes the Junji Ito collection did, but they innovated, they adapted, they made the whole goddamn thing black and white in manga art style, and its use of CGI to animate those characters is so fluid and it makes me... Ugh. Honestly, if you're new to horror or even anime and manga in general, this would be one of the first things for me to recommend to you, so go watch it, read it, whatever, you will be in for a good time. Up next is Shiki, a story where a mysterious family called the Kirishikis move into a western style mansion in a small town in the country. A lot of horrors happen in small towns in the countries I guess. And then we meet Megumi, a very pink girl who just doesn't like the country lifestyle. She wants something more extravagant, flamboyant, and suddenly, she dies, and so do so many others in that town. This is the story of finding out the nature of those deaths, spoiler, but not really, it was them Kirishikis, and hopefully proving that they did it to everyone who didn't believe them, and then defeating them. Shiki is one of the creepiest, scariest vampire stories out there. I know what everyone thinks of anything vampires. Tropey, lame, kinky, bad romance stories, seriously. Twilight is so unbelievably dog shit and my sister has a weird obsession with it that inadvertently made me secondhandedly experience the whole show so now I know the whole plot without ever sitting down to watch a single one of them. <clears throat> but Shiki is different. To be honest, for some reason, I could never get into it. The start was slow and I was looking for something scary and fast. And the first six episodes just set up the world and the plot, which is important for a good story, don't get me wrong, but I must have been in a mood for something to purely scare me and completely disregard the plot. But when I forced myself to sit down and watch a little more, I quickly found a plot with scary scenes, grotesque body horror, creepy child that also happens to be like 
really old, but don't worry, nothing lolly. It also has some really good narrative elements of a tragedy with irony that even made me kind of feel bad for them undead shit. In fact, so many things made me feel bad. The little girl, the head honcho of the vampires, doesn't seem evil in the traditional sense, and so do all of the vampires, like the whole thing with Toru and Natsuno, these siblings, and so many more. Everything really just jabs a stake in your heart and it doesn't hold back at all, and the consequences within the show don't either. It will kill off a prominent character, something I highly praise, it will make that moment emotional, it does so many things right. And the only slight problem I have with it is that the people who don't believe the people who knew the truth kinda take too long often, and it kinda pisses me off. I also see the priest's point of view that he doesn't want to solve things with violence, but fuck that guy. And the doctor was right in my opinion for the experiments he ran on his own wife, which must have been especially hard. There are just endless discussions to be made with the show. Things including morality, strategy, power scaling, and more. And that stuff only comes with a good story with moral ambiguity and good stuff like that. Just watch it, it's 22 episodes so kinda long but it is very worth it, I promise you. I was debating for a long time where exactly to put this show. I knew it was easily top 5, but I didn't know exactly how much. Initially, Uzumaki was supposed to be number 1, but I felt that it would be too cliche. So I did further research on various shows to fill those gaps, meaning I just watched them again basically, and I realized that this show belongs in no other place than the number 1 spot. Next up is a short one, kind of with 13 episodes in each season with a whopping 13 seasons and each being 4 minutes long, each episode is easy to consume and it sure as hell packs a punch in that small time allotted. This is one of the best anthology types I've ever seen. I was initially reluctant to check it out, primarily due to its art style, but even so, once I checked it out for the research of this video, I found out that it was really good. Despite how it may seem, the art is in fact very good, especially taking into consideration the fact that this is a story about a creepy guy telling stories with puppets and papers. It fits the style perfectly and the art is pretty. Like the glaring sun in the beginning of every episode and the attention to detail within the backgrounds are both signs of genuinely good art. And besides, the simplistic art style is a style, not a lack of quality. The simplistic art style and stiff motions of the characters is a very, very stylistic and unique artistic choice. And let me just say that it works out. There are a fair share of jump scares and every episode had me physically leading back away from my screen because I was scared. Like take this scene for example, there is a jump scare there so watch out. It's scary even if you knew that there was something coming, and this show, even with its short length and limited and restrictive art style, is able to pull off what many others can't. I think this is the perfect in-between ground between scaring and telling genuine stories. Again, this show is of high quality. The dialogue and the delivery of those lines are some of the most natural, regular everyday speech-like speech I've ever seen in an anime. Normally. Anime characters don't talk like regular Japanese people. Think how the characters in English dubs don't talk like you would every day. It's the same for Japanese, but for some reason, this show makes it almost seem natural. And despite the lower ratings on Crunchyroll, which let's be real here, they don't mean much, it's one killer of a show with quality that let it run for 13 episodes for 13 seasons and have an extra one of a live action version which I'm inclined to check out after this. So if you check out one thing from this video, I want it to be this one. It's the perfect length for you to just watch a season in roughly 40 minutes, it's unique, high quality, and it's guaranteed you scare you a bit. So those were 10 different things you could do this spooky season to heighten the true spooky season experience. I hope you enjoyed, no, I know you enjoyed at least one of them. So again, leave a like, subscribe, and comment which one your favorite was. My name is Nobo Koa, I feel cute when I scream, and thank you for watching.